everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're checking out a new printer from Epson that might be a game changer, actually. And you're probably looking at this thing thinking, well, this is not much of a game changer. It's a standard all-in-one, which it is. It's got the, you know, the kind of the slow auto document feeder up top here. You got a flatbed scanner, it can fax, it, of course it prints in color and it does everything last year's all-in-one printer would do for about $100 or $150. But the game-changing portion is on the side here. This is a, a new way of supplying ink to the printer that uses a big ink well here, a big tank of of ink in four different colors and is filled up with bottles that are officially sanctioned by Epson. So I know a lot of you out there have probably tried filling up the ink cartridges with bottles like these. Uh, well now Epson is going to sanction that officially and allow you to fill up a tank of ink on the printer and uh, get a lot more capacity and a lot a lower cost of consumables moving forward with the printer. Now, there is a cost though uh, to this savings, which is the fact that the printer's initial uh, cost, the entry point of buying the printer, is no longer subsidized by the ink, so you're going to be paying a lot more upfront. So this one will perform about the same as uh, last year's WF2650, uh, and uh, that one goes for about $80 on sale on Epson's website right now. Usually it's about $150 or thereabouts. This one with the ink tank uh, is going to run you about $500. So you're going to be spending a lot more up front, but over time, especially if you have a small business, the cost of using the printer will be less because the ink is less expensive. Now, they give you in the box uh, two sets of ink bottles, uh, kind of like some higher capacity ones here, which is what you would buy normally, as well as a bonus pack that gives you some uh, additional capacity. And they claim that you'll get about 11,000 pages out of the black, in, uh, the black ink and about uh, 8,000 or so prints on the color ink. And that assumes a certain amount of coverage, meaning how much ink you're putting onto the page. So this is not printing out, you know, full bleed uh, documents, but more or less, you know, things that don't fill up the page completely with ink, uh, you'll get that kind of performance. But no matter what you print, I do think you're going to be seeing a significantly higher capacity. And they say that if you have minimal ink coverage and are printing maybe, you know, 150 or 200 pages per month, uh, you might have enough in here out of the box to print for two years. So the overall consumable cost is going to be less, although the cost of the printer moving uh, initially is going to cost you more. Now the ink bottles are going to be pretty inexpensive also. The black ink here, uh, $20, the colored inks, 13 bucks each. And again, you probably won't need to fill these up all that often. If you're printing a lot, maybe every couple of months, uh, but if you're not printing all that much, it might be a year or so before you have to change any ink out. So a significant change in the business model here, which is why the printer uh, costs more up front. So now what we're gonna do is uh, fill up these ink cartridges here and we'll see how that process goes. And then we will take a look at some of the basic printing and scanning performance of the device. We're gonna start off with this black ink here. I promise I'm not going to bore you with all four colors here. We'll kind of speed that process up, but you've kind of pulled the uh, little tab off of the top here, and then you unscrew the lid, and we have to take off a little piece of film here. You gotta be really careful with this because you're dealing with a bottle of ink. This is not like a cartridge that is a lot cleaner to install. So there's a potential for spilling things. Uh, so you wanna be very careful about this when you do it. I would probably suggest that cats and other creatures that might uh, jump up on furniture are not nearby when you do that. So I'm gonna struggle a little bit with this, uh, uh, this thing here. So when I get this thing pulled off, we will start filling up the ink well. All right, I've got a big bottle of ink here and I'm going to screw this cap back on. And there's really nothing preventing any kind of spillage here. So you gotta be very, very careful uh, when you start pouring these things in here. Let me get a better angle on the camera here without getting uh, ink all over my carpet. Uh, so we're just going to pour the ink in like so and just kind of let it fill up the tank here. And while that's filling, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how this printer works. So it really feels like this tank is kind of a bolt-on. Uh, when you look inside at the mechanism, it actually has the, uh, the same kind of print head that you see on some of the cartridge-based printers. So uh, it's basically just feeding the ink in from the tank with a hose into uh, kind of a virtual cartridge that's in there. A very different approach to this. And as you can see, we still got the ink going in here. I'm gonna squeeze it a little bit to get uh, more of that ink out quickly. But this is going to be something that is potentially very messy. Uh, what's also interesting is that you don't have the means of uh, uh, accident, or preventing an accidental fillage of the wrong ink uh, into the wrong tank. So they don't really have any means of uh, putting any kind of key on the bottle or anything. So you have to be very careful to make sure that the right bottle goes in the right tank because I would imagine it's going to be very hard uh, to clean up. Uh, transporting the printer is also going to be difficult because uh, you don't want to have any spillage there. So they do give you a plastic bag in the box and there is a way to kind of tie down the door to this thing so you can prevent uh, the, the ink from spilling out while you're moving the uh, the printer around and it does have these little rubber stoppers on each tank but they don't really st they stay on okay but they they aren't like screw in things They're these little rubber toppers that just kind of snap down so you want to be careful with that so i'm going to finish this up here without making a mess and we'll be right back when all the ink is filled 
All right, we've got our ink loaded and it's all been primed and everything else that so we are ready to print. Before we do though, I wanted to step through a couple of the hardware and connectivity features. You have a 150 page paper tray here. So not a very large uh, capacity, but about in line with again, what you would see uh, at this point in the marketplace. Although that number now is a bit skewed because of this ink thing that they've put on. But uh, for printers at this uh, typical performance level, 150 uh, page capacity is, uh, is pretty decent. Uh, it has a bunch of connectivity options. You can connect it via Wi-Fi. Uh, to your wireless network. It'll also connect via Ethernet. So if you want to hardwire it into your uh, network switch or router, you can do that. Uh, you can also connect directly to a computer with a USB cable, which is uh, probably for some computers the easiest way to get documents scanned onto it. Although you can also scan over the network and Macs are really good for that because their built-in software will find it uh, automatically and do that. It can also print from iPads and Android devices as well as Chromebooks too. So it supports the Google Cloud Print as well as Apple's AirPrint protocol. So it kind of covers all those bases uh, as far as that's concerned. One thing that's missing though uh, that I've seen on other Epson all-in-ones is a memory card slot uh, for both printing out photos and documents, but also for storing things off the scanner. So one of the features I used to love about these printers was that I could scan a document uh, right into a memory card, pull that card out, and then uh, stick it into a computer or actually connect to the printer via the network and pull the files out that way. Uh, this lacks that, although you can connect it to a cloud account uh, through Epson software and, and send documents into your Dropbox or your Google Drive uh, or something like that. So it does lack uh, some features that I've seen on other prior models of Epson printers. So now what we're going to do is uh, boot up my iPad here and print out a document. So I'm just going to pop into my uh, Dropbox here and I've got some meeting minutes from uh, one of the school board meetings here. So I'm going to go over to my uh, Apple uh, menu and I'm going to go hit print here. And I've already uh, set up uh, the printer on the network here. The iPad found it automatically. And what we're going to do first is just do a, a single page document here and see how fast a standard black and white document will print. And after that, we will try out uh, doing the double-sided printing. So let's see what happens here now that we've sent that document to the printer. And there it goes. So it's printing out uh, pretty, at a pretty decent rate of speed here. And the quality doesn't look too bad either. So it's hard to see and pick up on camera, but um, I would say that the uh, text is very legible and it's uh, actually a pretty nice quality print, especially considering how fast it's going. There's also a, uh, a more fine mode that you can apply to this too. So if you wanted to get a nicer print quality, you can do that at the expense of speed. So now let's go back to our document here. I'm going to just print out maybe the first uh, one or two pages here. Uh, and what we're going to do is go into the uh, double-sided version here. It will print out uh, one, two, two. Just print a single page here. And I'm going to then go back to print. And let's see how that uh, du dual page printing works. Typically, the way these things work is that it'll uh, have the paper kind of pop halfway out, and then it will suck it back in. Let's see what happens. So there's the back side, and it's going to suck the paper back in. And now we'll have our double-sided uh, document almost done here, and there we go. So we've got a two-sided document here without having to manually uh, flip the page over. All right, so let's take a look and see how a color document prints. We're going to print out the PDF document that describes what this printer is all about. So I'm going to print that from my Mac right now. I will let that go wirelessly over to the printer and uh, see what we get now when it goes and prints out in color. So we can see the difference between the color speed and the black and white speed. Now this document I'm printing uh, is pretty involved. It's got a lot of uh, ink coverage on there, but as you can see, it is coming out pretty quickly and it looks pretty good. I mean, again, this is uh, about what I'd expect out of a printer that would normally cost about $100 to $150. So uh, the color quality, clarity is there. It's certainly not going to uh, be as good as something you'd pay more for, but uh, it is good enough for printing out documents, especially when you have business graphics and that sort of thing. It looks decent. And of course, you can always increase the print quality at the expense of speed. All right, now we're gonna check out its scan speed. We're gonna take that document we just printed here and stick it into the auto document feeder at the top of the device. Uh, unlike the printing component, it will not scan double-sided. So if you wanna do a double-sided scan, you're gonna to have to scan one side, flip it over, and then put it back in again. This will support uh, up to 30 pages in the document feeder. Now what I've got on my Mac here is a little utility that's built into OS X called image capture, and it will automatically uh, find our Epson uh, scanner printer here over the network, which is really handy. So you just load the software up, and as long as that uh, device is on the network, it's gonna find it, and I can go ahead here and click on scan, and we'll see how fast this thing scans. Now, I expect this to scan uh, at the speed that uh, it's, uh, ink cartridge uh, brother or sister scans at. So not very fast, but here we go. 
you can kind of see what that scan speed is. So not very fast as a scanner, uh, but if you're doing a, you know, a page or two at a time or something, or you wanted to set something in there, you know, maybe 20 pages or so and just kind of let it go for a while, uh, you'll be able to get documents scanned uh, fairly nicely in there. And of course, you still have the flatbed scanner that you can use also if you want to do something like a, a book or something like that. So from a performance standpoint, this $500 printer pretty much performs the same as a $100 printer, except the fact that you've got uh, this huge ink tank here that uh, if you are printing a lot, uh, will probably save you money in the end run. So if you think about buying the $100 version of this printer that runs on cartridges, uh, you'll get those starter carts that will give you maybe two or 300 pages to start with, and then you'll have to buy another set for another 50 or $60 that'll get you another couple hundred pages. Uh, this thing will probably get you uh, close to 10,000 pages, if not more, of documents printed like this. So if you're a, you know, a moderately uh, volumed office where you're printing out maybe a couple hundred pages a month, uh, this might get you through the whole year before you have to buy any more ink. And when you do, you're going to spend uh, pretty much the same amount, about $50 on the replacements, but uh, these bottles are going to get you another uh, couple thousand pages versus just a couple hundred or less on the cartridges. So the long-term cost of ownership is far less. So what I would do is look at what you're spending on ink and do the math and see if this uh, printer, based on the volume that you're doing, uh, might give you that uh, advantage on the cost of ink. But that said, you know, we've been trained to look for printers to uh, perform certain tasks at certain price points. And this really is performing tasks at a hundred dollar price tag, yet it's 500 bucks. So I think, you know, this might have been for me more attractive as maybe $350 or $400. It just feels like $500 is too much of a uh, thing where they're still making money off the ink at the outset here, just uh, kind of packaging it a little bit differently. So I think if it was a little bit less and that the printer cost was a little bit more in line with uh, what the ink costs moving forward, uh, that might make more sense to me because 500 for a printer that you know, we've come to expect at a different price point, uh, it just seems like a little bit much to me. The, also, the other problem is uh, loading the ink in is a messy process. So I have, as you can see on my hands here, some blue ink on my thumb. Uh, it wasn't, it, it wasn't complete. And I'm not like being, I was being very careful here. Just that when you take the cap off or put the cap back on, uh, you'll see the ink kind of drips down a little bit. Uh, there is a catch on the, uh, uh, each of the uh, little uh, entry points here so that uh, if a little bit spills out when you're pouring the ink in, which happened to me, uh, it will catch in there and not drip out of the printer. But you want to be very careful when you're moving it. Uh, you definitely want to use the bags that they give you in the box to transport it because you've got basically a tank of liquid here that's going to be sloshing around and you want to be really careful about that. So it's not a very elegant process of loading ink in here. And if you have expensive carpets in your office and you've got people that are a little clumsy, I think you wanna be careful about uh, who you have load ink in your printer because it is not as clean uh, as pulling the little sticker off the cartridge and sticking it in. It is a, a messy process with a tremendous potential for spilling ink on stuff that might cost money to, to get clean. So just be careful about that. So that is the new Epson ET4550, an interesting concept. I like where Epson is going with this. I would like to see a little bit of a less expensive cost of entry on this device, but I do like the idea of getting away from these uh, extremely expensive, exorbitantly so, uh, cartridges and moving to something that makes more sense like a bottle. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.